Natasha invited me to recount my experiences after having lived in, for six years in La Maison Prouvé, Jean Prouvé's house. When I arrived in Nancy in 1997, having been, having been appointed to the position of director of the architectural and heritage area in Meurthe et Moselle department, France, I visited several homes, which I couldn't really afford. I then remembered that Madame Millon, a painter married to a senior local representative, had praised the house known as the Maison Prouvée. It had been uninhabited for uh, 10 years, since Madeleine, Madeleine Prouvé, uh, Jean, Jean's widow, had left in 1987 at the age of 89. She had been living alone for three years, following the death death of her husband, Jean Prouvé, who died in the house in 1984. That means 30 years after he began to build his family house. And if there was no human presence in the house, the house was, was inhabited by a stone martin. None of you know what is a stone martin. And cockroaches which would come back on a regular basis at springtime. <laughs> I wasn't afraid of the poor state of the house, nor of its isolated location. But people in Nancy were really surprised to see that someone was interested in living in that wagon on the hill. I was even granted an of an article in the newspaper about that. The article underlined the fact that at last the house was recovering its initial function. Jean Prouvé was one of the major designers and constructors of the 20th century, you know that. And he was famous in many places in the world, but not in his own country. He was born in Nancy in 1901, and he had been educated in an arty oriented environment where his mother was a talented pianist, and his father, Victor Prouvé, an artist painter. He was, uh, Victor was a well-known figure of L'Art Nouveau, as well as uh, his godfather, Émile Gallet, a ceramist, glass, and furniture designer. He began as a craftsman, blacksmith, and would go on working metal with expertise. He chose Maxeville, nearby Nancy, to build up a factory where he had a design office, a workshop, and a production line. He would make researches there, looking for smart, efficient processes to produce a wide range of things, buildings, components, furniture, together with the workers and with his brothers, Henri and Pierre. At the end of the 40s, he progressively lost the control of his tool of production. It was over in 1951, and he considered himself as a dead man after that. By that time, he worked in Paris and only came back for the weekends. And during his, uh, this difficult period, the family decided to move from the town center to the Rue Augustin Accard, where they could buy a cheap piece of land considered as non-buildable. The Maison and the nearby atelier were listed as historical monuments in 1987 and owned by the city of Nancy, thanks to the state and local country authorities. An ironic situation for Jean Prouvé's memory, who considered 
it should last for only one or two generations' time. The children had left Nancy except Claude, the only son, who was an architect and didn't want to come back to the house. So the protection was to prevent from risks of dismantling the buildings and split the land. It has been nearly uh, almost uh, sold by the family. Now let's focus on the house itself. It's the house in harmony in the landscape, with the landscape, and in accordance with the climate. I'm going to tell you how. In, our, in harmony in the landscape, because it's perched high up on the hillside to the northeast of Nancy, where Jean Prouvé's personal house is positioned in such a way as to respect the beautiful natural environment. Woods and low limestone walls form terraces, only used for grapevines. You see this rest of walls? It's a ground floor house nested on a steep south-facing slope among trees. The beginning of the access road climbs direct, directly up the slope in the part of the garden planted with fruit trees. We call it a verger here. Plum trees and mirabellier, that's the yellow plums. One branch of the road leads to the workshop called uh, l'atelier here, and, uh, which was in fact Jean Prouvé's office in Maxéville. It's an 8x8 eight eight building with an actual, actual portal frame and a winter garden which was added afterwards. A cross-sectional view of the section provided by uh, the Conservatoire National des Arts et Métiers shows uh, how steep the, the um, terrain is. At the back of the house, to avoid erosion, Rock falls here, uh, washouts, and to avoid the inherent risk of slippery surface, Jean Prouvé's technique involved the reuse of old strips of metal plus corner posts embedded in the wall. We can see the, them because they are hidden in the hill, but it's a very uh, intelligent way to hold the terrain. So I'm going to quote Jean Prouvé here. When you build, when you must pay, you must pay particular attention to the section and to everything that can depend on its nature. It's in this particular case, the terrain is very steep and was an unoccupied wilderness, simply as a consequence of its slope. And the fact that no one wanted to live on the hill we built paths which made it possible to access the section at the correct level and therefore to build, on, to build on it. At that time, my wife's car was a jeep which simplified the task of transporting building materials. However, the section is of a very poor quality. It's a type of landslide which led us to the decision to build a very light house. So the house is in our harmony with the landscape. Jean Prouvé leveled the house and designed the living room to fit into the landscape with, with the widest possible forward projecting bay windows along the edges of the platform. Here you can see the, the landscape. The third point I would like to make it is how the house made, is made to cope with the local climate. The climate in Nancy, east of France, is continental with a very large temperature, temperature range, hot summer and very cold winters. And as the house is oriented south, the house needs to be cooled and protected from the 12 o'clock sun and insulated from the north. So what did he do? He, 
he decided to put here a whole range of cupboards, 27 meters long cupboards. I, it's an insulation which is very, uh, very good. I could, I could uh, see how, how it was good. Uh, cupboards, very light cupboards, filled up, filled with clothing, linen, books, and thus creating a natural form of insulation. The 60 centimeters deep cupboards filled with pocket of, pockets of air, textiles, layers of paper demonstrate Jean Prouvé's clever, economical, and sustainable creativity. The second element very important here is the fireplace. You can see it's in the middle of the house on the drawing. The fireplace at the heart of the house, inspired probably by the Villa Majorelle, dining room one, sorry, is another clever element to help the resolution of the strong thermical variations between night and, and day. Here is, here, here is the uh, fireplace. It contributes to the heat of the whole volume of the house. It's a concrete box, trapeze box, with rounded angles, spreading out the heat all the night long, with a high thermal inertia, which keeps the living room warm until dawn. I could, we could see that with my family. Every, every day, every night, it was very warm. So you can see here, yes, uh, the Chimney de la Villa Majorelle. Of course, Jean Prouvé knew, which is in the middle of the room. Third important uh, climate uh, tool is the underfloor heating. Pipes of hot, hot water, warmed up by the ga gas boiler, which was a trendy solution at the time. A fourth important thing were um, the curtains. The curtains, you had the light ones. There were two kinds of curtains. The light ones, uh, which were um, woven by Simone, the, their daughter, and uh, she had her uh, view, weaver machine in the largest bedroom. The bigger bedrooms was uh, the weaver machine of Simone. You can see here, by the way, the stones of the land of the terrain, which have been uh, collected for the structure of the house on the, the two bottoms. The thicker curtains were made to protect from the sun, but there's also um, the five tool for the climate where was the natural ventilation. Natural ventilation in the bedrooms with the window shutters. The shutters and sash windows are going up and down with very sophisticated counterweight dissimulated behind wooden aprons. You're going to see all this, uh, how it works in the movie afterwards. The frames open the entire length of each bedroom. Each bedroom has the entire face opened with windows and shutters. In the spacious uh, living room, you have side ventilation thanks to the two lateral bays here. Ventilation here and in the opposite facing uh, window door, which acts, which is an uh, opening, it gives the ventilation of the whole big living room here. Well, voilà. here is the other uh, big door opening on the terrace, which opens and gives the ventilation in summer. The spacious living room you have um, with a one centimeter thick glazed window, which is a good insulation mean combined with a, an 
aesthetical advantage compared with the double glazing windows and thinker aluminium profiles needed then. Let's move on the new, uh, now to the structure of the house. So the lightness of the structure is the starting point of the, of the uh, design of Jean Prouvé. Steel frames here. In between them the, the, uh, will be put the, the uh, cupboards and steel beams. So we have to, um, to underline the Prouvé's wonderful technical sketches provided, which provided the basis for immediate, di immediate dialogues with the workers. They would produce models, prototypes, very often real-sized ones, in a seamless process. And this is the result of uh, his work, how he worked, he worked with the workers, but also with Henri, and uh, with uh, Pierre, his brothers. Very good drawings, axonometries, and uh, sketches. Very precise with all the details. I, I could uh, find them and use them. This is uh, they are the back panels of the structure. The lightness of the envelope is very important too, and of the roof. This, the details of the roof, in al aluminium roof here, which is fixed on the ceiling and the, here, of three layers of uh, pine wood stick together. Pardon. Oui. Stick together. That's the whole envelope of the house. Those panels called the uh, Rousseau, uh, panel Rousseau here, they are going to be uh, put in between, in between the bedrooms too, to partition the house. They have a quality of being flexible and combined with the flexibility of the roof. That means it's optimi optimized on the site work to be able to see on the section the undulations of the roof in the landscape and in the house. The, th the ceiling and the roof are waved shaped three sections in, inside the, the sketch, the drawing here. This is the bedroom section, here the kitchen, and here the big, big living room. Very nice living room. The bedrooms being smaller with a long corridor here along the cupboards going from part to part from the house. So it's very simple. The lower point of the wave is tied up by intervals on the beams here. And the wave takes off and lands on the, la on the large bay window. It, it would give the maximum of light inside the house here, inside the living room here. He used to refer to the living room as a um, a tavern, would you say that? A tavern, an auberge in French. Uh, for the family, for the friends coming, like here, listening to the music. It was a sort of public house in the living room, a big living room. And uh, a house where one could get food and bed. That's the definition of the dictionary for l'auberge. In the bottom here of the, of the living room, there's a palm tree which has been uh, planted at the, at the beginning in a sort of trapeze hole in the concrete floor, which was a sort of a habit in the 50s to have uh, plants, normal plants, inside the, inside the living room. By, by the way, the, the gas pipe was going here. 
is, goes through here, under the floor. And uh, once Madame Prouvé has been found on the floor, um, because the, the palm tree had cut the roots, had cut the gas pipe. <laughs> and fortunately, uh, the gardener who uh, arrived uh, in front of the bedrooms, as you could see, the ar arrival of the house, could see that the, the bed wasn't done. Madame Prouvé's bed wasn't done. Yeah. So he said, that's not normal. And he called uh, Claude Prouvé, her son, and he came up and she was, she was trying to, she had been trying to call and, and uh, for help. She was on the floor and they called the uh, firemen and etc. So the bay is designed here uh, with a very thin aluminum fixed vertical and horizontal joinery. That's fixed, very, th very thin. And I must say that all the Japanese and Chinese visitors are usually fascinated by the balance and the serenity feeling that it conveys. It's incredible. So you, because uh, it's a very light house, ceiling and roof, you are in the landscape. You can uh, listen to the uh, uh, birds and songs and rain. You're outside, in fact. You're not in the house. You're in the landscape every, at every moment. It's, it's a fascinating uh, house for that. The living room is the important room, and then the, you have the services rooms, which are designed with the, those uh, portholes and uh, with the corrugated, corrugated aluminium face outside and a plain, way, a plain face here inside the kitchen, bathroom, and entrance. And the, those portholes, they let the natural light inside, but you cannot see the inside from the outside, which is very nice. They work as filters, in a way. One more detail. Uh, the section of each porthole is painted with a silver lac, so that the light reflects and moves and increases the power of light, uh, perforating the envelope and enhances the metal and aluminium qualities. I would like to underline to the functional aspect of the whole house. Everything is mobile. The shelves, the roads of the roads, all those shelves, they are mobile. You can put them on the other, on the other way. And uh, this is a piece of metal to show how it can move and how it's tied on the post. Uh, the, these are the little uh, road, um, how do you call that, road, roads for tea towers to dry them. You, could, you, you, you put the tea towers here. You put them and then put back in the cupboards. You have this, those kind of details everywhere. The mobility of the, of the uh, doors or cupboards with those uh, thin sheets of pine plywood, stabilized in runners here, and with those beautiful long handles. The bedroom doors of the house which are cut with a jigsaw in, in, in the panel so that you don't see them. They are very elegant and very uh, simple to, to make with a jigsaw. You can hardly notice them. Voila. Now I'm going to speak about the polyacid. This is a long very long uh, shelves, bookshelves, in front of the bay window of the house.
where all the shelves can go up and down and they have this uh, pieces of uh, sheet here which are creating sort of rhythm in, inside the bookshelves. So there's uh, the, um, now I'm going to speak about the polychromy of the house. Here, the two slides show how we, we, we were uh, using uh, the, um, the living room with paintings. That's at the time of the Pruvis family. So the polychromy, you have a few important things. The, we're here. The ceram ceramics, which was done by a friend of the family. The carpet, sort of a gray, green, gray, very nice color. And inside the cupboards, each bedroom has shelves with a different nose color on the shelves. In the kitchen, uh, you have a, a linoleum, which is a red, reddish linoleum, yes. And um, otherwise, so a lime tree green for the carpet. I had to change it. Uh, the linoleum orange red and black for the kitchen plan de travail. So the restoration work I had to do was to, to uh, renew uh, the um, heating system. Uh, first, first of all, I had to change the back, the bottom of the panels. I didn't want to leave a heavy print on that house. I wanted to be light as well. So nevertheless, as, as the heating system ran out of order, I had to get it fixed. We took off the aluminum panels and then behind changed the panneau rousseau here, new panneau rousseau. At the minimum I could I could do. So I had to change to and remove the original carpet. It had been burned by the sun, it was rotten here and there. The change was very expensive to replace, whereas it was originally, originally the cheapest one for corridors. At the time, Jean Prouvé bought it. The curtains here, completely uh, burnt. I had to change. Uh, I, I didn't had, I couldn't do by myself all those works because it's. It belongs to the city of Nancy, so they would do by themselves the, the big changes. I was just surveying, yes, I, have, I was surveying uh, the work, but I couldn't decide or, or choose anything. I was uh, sort of, as an architect de Bâtiment de France, I would survey, but I, was, I wouldn't, wouldn't decide by myself, of course. Here is a, a track of the memory of the garden. And uh, I already mentioned the importance of the landscape, but the garden, which was taken care of by Prouvé's wife, Madeleine, remained neglected and would need to be restored. Yeah. The original garden at the beginning, when the panels were brilliant, the line of the roofs and of the eaves in, in the hill, and the lines of the big living room here. That's the way I found the house under the snow. I would like to conclude with the speech given in Rotterdam where a big exhibition was organized in Jean Prouvé's honor in 1981. And when he was awarded the Erasmus Prize with the a really big exhibition. The prize was given to him because industrial construction, which, is, which he envisions in the future, offers a solution to social housing and allows architects, builders, 
production managers and entrepreneurs to occupy equivalent positions. Because as a builder, he starts from a consistent and clear design and achieves technical realization and serial production. Because he succeeds combining usefulness, modern techniques and design by applying new material, materials to his projects. Because he is a pioneer in the use of industrial construction components and assembly techniques. His, his construction has lost none of their relevance and indeed offer great opportunity for the future. And finally, it is because he devoted his entire life to this combination of architecture with industry in order to ensure a human environment with our present civilization. Conclusion. In conclusion, Prove's personal house is a piece of art with an industrial thought, and the house is full of ingenuity. It's an example of design expressing modernity, simplicity. The slightly curving lights of the ceiling, the portholes as light toys, are poetic. And behind this lies the concept of a building which could be standardized but remains unique. The house has been uh, uh, to sell for a while in a journal called, uh, in a newspaper called Le L for 70,000 uh, francs, nouveau francs. Well, francs. And now Natasha will show you a short film about the house, a very good film. Um, but the anecdote is that I was still in the house when the footage took place and I was asked to take a hotel room while they were filming. Enjoy it and thank you.